Greetings, saints. Welcome once more this Sunday. Can we bow our heads and pray for the word? Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come into the throne of grace, Lord, this morning. We worship and adore you. Father, we need to appreciate life. We appreciate your grace, your covering upon our lives. Father, as we come into the throne of grace and listening to your word, O oh God, we want to honor this moment and not take it for granted, O oh God. Speak to our hearts, O oh God, in accordance to what we need today. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray. Amen. I want us to go into the book of Luke 6, starting from 43 up until 45. For a good tree does not bear bad fruit, nor does a bad tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For men do not gather figs from thorns nor do they gather grapes from a bramble bush. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good, and an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart brings forth evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. I want us to go into Proverbs 23, 7. For as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Eat and drink, he says to you, but his heart is not with you. Um, I want us to talk about this topic today, that we are how we think. We are how we think. And the word of God here is clear that in the abundance of our hearts the mouth speaks so what our mind thinks determines the outcome of our lives or determines our future the mind if i have to put it in the language that maybe some of you will understand in the area of technology so that you can Put it close to the activities that we do on a daily basis so that you can understand how the mind works the mind is like a cpu of the computer which is the central processing unit the computer has got a central processing unit which is like a mind or the brain of the computer the computer for the computer to work that mind of a computer is programmed to function on command so when you put a command in a computer it will react based on the brain or the cpu of that computer how it was programmed the same with the mind so how our mind is determines how we react on situations or our life activities on a day-to-day -day basis that's why the word of god says guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. That is in Proverbs 4, 23. Guard your heart with all diligence. For out of it, it flows the issues of life. So there's nothing that flows out of your life that doesn't have to do with how you think, that doesn't have to do with your CPU or your brain or how you perceive life. And you realize that if the CPU is dysfunctional. It will not give you the results that you intended to give you because it is dysfunctional. Who is responsible for the CPU? Is the word of God, is God. So if you, 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 the absence of the word upon your life, or if you don't meditate upon the word upon your life, your thinking system becomes corrupt. And why I say that, you will find that we can face the same challenge, but how we react is based on our CPU. If you face a challenge of, of disappointment upon your life, or for instance, you'll find that, I'll give you an example. Maybe somebody swears at you. Somebody comes to you and swear at you. You'll find that another person that has got a different brain or the thinking system or how they perceive life or how they think, 
they can come to you and say, but why are you leaving this person unattended? Why are you not responding to this? How can you allow them to swear at you like that? And you'll find that because the central processing unit is not the same, we are receiving the same information, it's the same vulgar word, it's the same swearing, but how we receive it, how we action it, has to do with how our brain is programmed. Guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. And other people can blame their childhood, how they were raised, how they were brought up, how so and so did this to them, that's why they are behaving like this, how they had some misfortune in life, how life had to be unfair to them, and they can react to that, and they've got all the reasons that they can give but the reasons are not those reasons because the same challenge given to another person with a different program or programming in their mind, it will be a different output. Guard your heart with all diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. And we learn that there are people, if you push them enough, you will realize that that's things that will begin to come out. They can pretend to be all well and good but the depth of the heart, when it's pushed, when there's an abundance of that heart, we see it when you push that person into the corner. That is the abundance of the heart that the Bible is talking about. If you can pretend all you like, you can act like you are not hurt all you like. But when you are pushed to a certain level, then that abundance of the heart, because now the heart has received enough to react, it will react and that which is dwelling or resonating deep inside your heart or sinking is not visible. Once the abundance of the heart is portrayed, then those things will begin to come out. I want us to be very, very vigilant because the word of God can never lie. The word of God is truth and we are guided by the truth. We are guided by the word of God and how we react to the issues of life on a daily basis. It determines what or the make or the CPU, how that pro the computer is programmed. So we need to be able to go into our maker who is the one that determines the program in our computer. That's why Paul said we need to, to renew our mind. When we accept Christ, we need to allow Christ to renew our mind because how the world system is how the world determines us we need to think how the world understands and is understanding and accommodating that because you have faced one two three in life it is okay to react like this but the word of god is different and the word of god has got ways and things that needs to govern that word that needs to govern the kingdom of god and it doesn't change because of our environment it doesn't change because of what we face in life. It doesn't change because of what we were told. It doesn't change because of the circumstance that is conducive in our lives, but it remains the same. It's the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. That means we act based on the word. We don't act based on the circumstance that we face in life. Someone can say, but faith, you don't understand what this person said to me. You don't understand what I had to bear in life. You don't understand what situation was surrounding me, how I was brought up. You don't understand what I had to endure. Then it's okay for me to behave this way. It's okay for me to react upon the life issues this way. But I'm here to tell you today that the word of God is saying we need to renew our mind because the word understands that the circumstance and the heart condition has to do with our thinking system. And our thinking system had to do with how we were raised. It had to do with our experiences of life. It has to do with what we were told. And we begin to, to rehearse those words in our mind. And we begin to accommodate those words. And they became who we are and they begin to manifest upon our lives 
but that is the world system. It's not the word of God. The word of God is saying, according to what Paul said in the book of, 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 uh, of Romans 6, that we need to renew our minds. We need to be able to allow the word of God to work our minds, to change our thinking system. Because if we don't change our CPU or our thinking system, it determines our future. It determines how we perceive life. And somebody can say, so and so succeeded in life because maybe a life was presented to them this way. It's not true. You'll find that there are people that grew up in poverty, but they did, began to change their thinking system and change their mentality of poverty. And they begin to be something else in life. And there's somebody that grew up with everything in life, but because their thinking system, they were not aligned. It has to do with your thinking system. It has got nothing to do with your background. It has got nothing to do with what you faced in life. It has got nothing to do with what you experienced. It has got nothing to do with what you were told. It has got nothing to do with that. It has to do with the CPU, the central processing unit, which is the brain. And we need to give that brain to God, how it thinks, how it perceives life, and how it's hindering ourselves between achieving the greatness and the potential that God has put in our lives. And we keep on harboring. We keep on harboring issues in our lives. We keep on meditating upon the issues until we cannot contain it anymore. And it becomes the abundance of the heart. And when that abundance of the heart, we begin to see the fruit based on the things that we have harbored upon our spirit, upon our soul, upon our mind, upon our heart. And that is what determines our success. It determines our failures. It determines how we perceive life. It determines our happiness. It determines our sadness. We can blame people all we can, but it has got nothing to do with people that has hurt you. It has got nothing to do with your surrounding. It has got nothing to do with what you perceive as a limitation. But you need to give that mindset to God and say, Lord, this is against your word. Read the word carefully and understand what the word says about, upon your life and begin to insert in your mind the word of god what the word says in your life what what your experience says in your life what not what you have heard says in your mind begin to rehearse and put in feed your mind your cpu with the word of god what is the word saying concerning your your life and you need to live according to that you need to begin to schedule your life according to that not according what the world says how i need to behave because of my circumstance because of my situation it's okay to cry to mourn it's okay to behave like this it's okay to do one two three it's because it's okay to hurt people back because they've hurt you that's what the, the word says but the word of god doesn't allow us that it is not okay it says it's okay to perceive our lives based on the word of god I'm not the tail, I'm the head, I'm successful, I can make it. That's what the word is perceived upon our lives. That's how you need to perceive life. That's how positive you need that positive energy that you need to instill based on the word upon your life. And you begin to see the manifestation of the word upon your life on a daily basis. Some depression that we see upon our lives is not based on the circumstance but it's based on our thinking system it's based on how we perceive the life and after that we begin to react after the abundance of the heart we begin to speak that which is in the heart and i want to urge everyone today to say that we've got um, um a room to to change and a room to learn and i've learned in my life there are things that sometimes they will come in my mind because of how much hurt I am at that particular moment. And I begin to evaluate and say, Lord, this is not in your word. I'm thinking like this, but it's not in your word. Take it away from my heart. Take it away from my spirit or my mind before it begins to resonate in me and becomes part of me. I want us to go back to God today and say, Lord, 
renew our mind because our mind determines our future. Our minds determine success. It determines how we perceive life. There are many hatreds today. There are many enemical people today. You hate other people today. You are not in speaking terms. And when you look back, you realize that maybe they said something to you that you misinterpreted because of how you think, how you perceive life. It's not exactly what you had, but you had something else because of how you interpret life because of how your mind system, how your CPU is programmed. And we need to go back and reprogram that CPU in accordance to the word of God. Let's bow our heads and pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I give you honor and praise. Lord, I worship you. I thank you, Lord, for your word. Your word cannot lie and your word cannot come down void. Father, I pray for repentance upon our lives, for everything that we have left to resonate in our spirit, in our mind, in our body, in our hearts, and they begin to dwell, and the enemy begins to tell lies upon our lives, and we embrace it, and those lies are affecting how we think. They affect how we perceive life, and those lies are against the will and the word of God, and that which the Lord has in store for us. Father, I need to pray that, Lord, you help us to renew our mind, that we may dwell, Father, in your word and not dwell upon the circumstances that we face and not dwell upon the experiences that we face as people that hurt us, that wants to bring us back to the situations that we once had or that we once experienced but it doesn't want us to move forward. It doesn't want us to, to experience the fullness of Christ upon our lives. Father, I need to pray that, Lord, you will help us to eliminate these thoughts and replace these thoughts with the word of God because the word of God came that we may have life and have it more abundantly, that we may have the joy of the Lord that is our strength. Father, I thank you. I honor you today. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen.